Hallelujah. All right, let me pray. Father, we just thank you for this time right now, Lord God, of sharing the word. Lord, I kind of such a privilege to share your word, Father. I don't take this lightly. And Lord God, I thank you that as I share your word, I'll be led of your spirit. I thank you that my mind, my ideas, not nothing of me will be shown this morning. Just the word of God, Jesus Christ of Nazareth, will be lifted up. My whole purpose this morning, Father, is to glorify you. So I thank you and I pray that as your word comes forth, Lord God, people will see you in the name of Jesus. They will be drawn closer to you in Jesus' name. I thank you and I pray that not one person that's sitting in this building today will leave here the same way they came in. In the mighty name of Jesus. I bind every work of the enemy, Satan. You will not hinder any part of this message whatsoever. The people have came to hear and they will indeed hear. Not only will they hear, but they will hear intelligently and perceive that which being taught in the mighty and glorious and awesome name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. Uh, Sister Carol has a treat for our children downstairs. Amen. All of our children, Amen. 3 to 11, please follow Sister Carol. She's going to bless you real good. Amen. Where's Brother Gary? Will you please turn this down? Thank you very much. Because uh, this kind of message is very exciting. I'm not to get the hollering up in here. I don't want to. Bust nobody's ears wrong, amen. amen. But praise God, I'm excited, I'm pumped up. This word is good, amen. amen. All right, are you a proverb of the 23rd chapter yet? Amen. If you're there, say amen. 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 Okay, let's look at verse 7. We've been talking about a series, What Do You Think? We've been talking about the series for the last few weeks. My wife brought the message last week, and she's done such a beautiful job, amen? amen. But uh, this, this day, we're going to start right back on our series, What Do You Think? It's important that a Christian, a born-again believer, uh, guard their own mind. Watch what you are thinking, because what you think controls your life. Yeah. All right, let's look at the Word of God. I've got so much to show you, and it looks like I'm going to have time to do it, so I'm so grateful for that. Hallelujah. Okay, here we go. Now, if it gets too heavy, I mean, if I, if I go too fast, you're going to need to get the tape. Because what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring meat, vegetables, rice, gravy, potatoes, all that's coming out the Word this morning. Y'all ready to receive? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm ready to give, too. <laughs> Verse 7. For as he thinketh in his feet, so heart, is he. Heart, heart. Heart. No, that's not what your Bible says. It says, as he thinketh in his ears, so is he. Heart. 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 Is that what it said in your Bible, Steve? Heart. Heart? Maybe I need to change Bibles then. <laughs> as he thinketh in his elbows, so heart. is he. Heart. Where did you have to think at? In your heart. heart. Think in your heart as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. It's important that you think with more than your mind sometimes. You need to get past your mind because your mind can be easily what? Change. But when you think with your heart, when you go past the mental prospect of thinking and get into your heart, then that's when it'll stay. That's when it'll stick. You ever heard the word of God in the message? Oh, you say, oh man, that message was so good. Then somebody said, well, what did he think? I don't know. It was good, though. How do you know it was good? You don't remember a thing that was said. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. All right, let, let's see how well Brother Ralph remembers. He's sitting up in the front row. Brother Ralph, it was two weeks ago when I brought a message on What do you think? What do you remember about that message, Brother Ralph? I know I remember that. Well, when, when a man... See, when you catch the person off guard like this, they panic. They don't know what to do. <laughs> Come on, Ralph, just tell us. See, when you have your mind made up, you have to have your, your heart made up on what you're going to do. And you can't, no matter what the circumstance, situations, or anything that happens, your heart can't be changed. So you need to be steadfast. And the only way to have your heart set is by putting the word on the inside of you. Amen. That's pretty good. Amen. Right? Yeah. That's good. All right. All right, Dr. Marlowe, you thought I wasn't coming to you lately. Two weeks ago, you was here. And you said, oh, brother, that was an excellent message. Tell me what you remember, Dr. Mike. Well, I remember? <laughs> well, I remember that where the battle takes place is actually within the mind itself. Mm -hmm. And that's where the enemy can uh, undermine you if you mm -hmm. think within your mind instead of your heart. That's good. Yeah. Right? Praise God, man. Well, See, that's what let me know. Y'all getting past the mental part of it. Amen. Pam, can I reach you over there, Pam? 
Pam don't want me to reach for this. Okay, Pam, I'm going to pretend like I can't reach you, okay? Pam says, no. All right, let's go. Pam says, everybody's doing pretty good. Don't bother me. Pam, now you know I like participation, don't you? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Can you hear me good back there? Yes, I can. Okay. All right. Pam, now you know I like participation, amen? Mm -hmm. Now why are you sitting that far on the side of the chair? Amen. Okay, I can't get the cord over there. All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, write down the defi definition for the word thinketh. See, I've given the definition already, but there are some people who, who are here for the first time. Amen. And Amen. they need to know what we've been talking about. Let me tell you something. I wouldn't dare ask you to come to this church and want you to leave here with nothing. Amen. I wouldn't dare ask you to come and take your time out this early in the morning to come and say, God, that was boring. Oh. Amen. <laughs> you won't ever get a chance to say that here. Amen. This word, I'm going to have y'all so fired up this morning. You're going to leave it just like Dr. Marlowe did a couple of weeks ago. Man, that was great. He, I went outside, he came, he said, man, that was great. Man, you had me thinking I was, what's his name, Fred Price or somebody. <laughs> had my head all big, I couldn't even go out the door. <laughs> but it's the trunk again, okay, because nobody talked to me like this since you left. But. All right, here we go. For as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Write down this definition for thinketh. If you need a pencil or paper, raise your hand. Let's share a pencil and paper so Amen. those who want to uh, take notes. If you need a Bible, if you need a Bible, raise your hand. We, we got Bibles back there on the uh, table somewhere back there. I want to make sure everybody gets this word. Because, see, that's what we come to church for, to get the word. Amen. 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 Say that. It's all about the word of God. Say that. I mean, I sing real good and everything, but I think I, I'm going to be preaching. Amen. 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 Brothers, good to see you, brother. Hallelujah, you're blessing me. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, does everybody have it? Because I want to make sure you got it. Right. Okay, does everybody have it? Because I want to make sure you got it. Because this, everybody, look at, listen to me for a minute. This, what I'm bringing this morning, will be a life-changing message. Amen. When I said you won't leave here the same when I was playing, I meant that, then. Amen. The Lord was there. I couldn't even sleep last night. I was hearing scriptures come to my mind while I was asleep. Amen. Really? Really? I'm, I'm laying in the bed trying to get rest so I can get up early, and the Holy Spirit is speaking out scriptures all night long. Amen. Amen. Oh, this is for somebody today, love. Amen. All right. Woo. Praise God. Oh, my, uh, my name is Pastor Nate L. Forward. For those who are here for the first time, my youth minister, you need to let people know who you are, brother. Amen. Hey, thank you to Pastor Son. Well. <laughs> no, I'm not the pastor, son. I'm the pastor, all right? Amen. Praise God. You know, God is no respect of age. Amen. 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 When, when Solomon came into the ministry, Solomon was a teenager. Amen. And when Solomon took over the ministry, he told God, he said, Lord, out of all the things I want in this world, I want wisdom to lead your people. Amen. Amen. That's what I ask God for every day, wisdom. Mm -hmm. Watch the wisdom of God that's going to come out Amen. of this world. Amen. Amen. All right. You ready to write down this definition for thinking? Yeah. Amen. It's important that you write it down because when you write things down, you retain them a lot better once you write them down. Amen. Plus, you can go back and look at it. It Amen. means to split or open. Think it. We're teaching ministry. That's why I said write down definitions and turn to this and read this with me because we're teaching ministry. To split or open. That's the first part of the definition for thinking. Amen. To split or open. The next part of that definition is to act as a gatekeeper. This is a oh, Greek right. definition. Well, come on. I'm not giving it. This is not a Webster definition. This is a Greek. Amen. Now, let me explain that for those of you who don't know what I'm talking about. The Bible, the Old Testament was originally written in Hebrew. The New Testament was originally written in Greek. So what I do is when I read the Word of God, I don't just read it. I'll go and look up word for word what God is saying Amen. to me so I'll know what to deliver to you all. Yeah. So Amen. I look up these words one by one. That's why I got to have hours in the Word. Amen. I got to have hours. That's because right. when I come to y'all, I want to leave something with you. That's right. Amen. I got to leave with you. Amen. I got something to leave with you this morning. Amen. To act as a gatekeeper. God, I couldn't wait for Sunday morning, Steve. Amen. God, Lord, let the day not rub his ass. The last part of that definition is to estimate. Uh -oh. To estimate. Okay, now while you're writing, I want you to write down this first, first point. This is a point that will stick with you for the rest of your life. 
The second part of that definition was to act as a gatekeeper. Point number one. You've got to realize your success or failure in this life is determined on how well you keep your gate. Uh oh. Amen. Come on now. Oh yeah, I repeat it. I, 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 I am a repeater, sister. I will repeat it. I love repeating. You're, you've got to realize that your success or failure in this life is determined on how well you keep your gate. Amen. What did we say the definition was? To act as a gatekeeper. Come on now. What am I talking about? You got to guard what comes in your mind. Amen. You got to guard what comes in your mind. See, when things come in your mind, they can do one thing or another. They can direct you one way, or they can direct you the other way. Right, they can right. cause you to go forward, or they can cause you to go back. Uh-oh. Say that. Uh-oh. Sometimes what people say to you and things can cause you to stand still. That's right. Amen. You're being neutral. Do y'all know what neutral means? You're not going forward, or you're not going back. And if you're not going forward, you're not accomplishing anything. Amen. It's too many non-productive Christians. Amen. Not doing nothing for God and neither doing anything for themselves. Uh -oh. yeah. I'll repeat it. You've got to realize that your success or failure in this life is determined on how well you keep your gate. Come on now. And let me tell you something else. It's not my responsibility to keep your gate. Uh -oh. yeah. It's yours. Well. When I bring this word, it's up to you to take this word and use it in your life or to just throw it aside and say, oh, that was a nice message. Go throw your notes away. Yeah. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. And then when the devil come after you, you know what? You go, oh, pass away some notes. <laughs> you can't find them. Uh -oh. yeah. You get these notes down and you go back over doing the work and yeah. check out and see if I'm telling you the yeah. truth. Yeah. That's right. We got too many Jim Jones and David Caressi popping up. You need to be checking out everything you hear. Yeah. Get your Bible and go back and read and see if the pastor is telling you the truth. Amen. Glory to God. That's good. That's see, that's right. how you stop all this David Caress stuff. Yeah. Yeah. That's where you stop it. You get your own Bible and you pick up your notes. And let me go see if that word really means thank you. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Come on. See, Come on. I have no problem with that. I would not get offended if y'all do right. that. Amen. What I want you to do is do it anyway so you can see that I have been before God. Amen. Steve, I don't have time to waste your time. Amen. What happened? <laughs> was it the anointing or what? What happened, Brother Gary? Yeah. Got, I don't know. Brother, I've been spitting on it all the morning. <laughs> no, that's not it. Something happened. Must have been the anointing. Well, all right. Y'all got that definition? You got that first point? Amen. There you go. Turn me down a little bit because I'm going to get the screaming up in here. Well, this word is excited, man. Amen. Anybody else talked up about the word? See, the word of God pumps me up. Amen. Did it, did it. I remember a time when I was homeless. Oh, yeah, I remember that. Me too, brother. <laughs> <Amen>. <laughs> I, remember, I remember a time when I was homeless. I remember a time when I was locked up behind bars. Amen. I remember a time when I thought there was no reason to live whatsoever. Uh -oh. Can anybody witness what I'm talking Amen. about? I feel like there was no reason to live whatsoever. I was just too afraid to kill myself. Well, I heard one time that if you kill yourself, you go to hell. So I didn't want to go to hell. Yeah. <laughs> so I didn't kill myself. <laughs> so I said, I better live and not die. Amen. And then one day Jesus Christ came in my heart. Amen. Come on. I invited him in. Amen. And I'm allowed to live to be 120. Amen. I don't want to die no more. I want to live. Because I got a purpose. Man, come on now. Hallelujah. Glory mm -hmm. to God. Whew, man, I tell you, I'm fired up. All right, there are three things, three realities. I'm going to put it like that. There are three, write this down. There are three realities that will cause you to think one way or the other. Very important. Very important. There are three realities that will cause you to think one way or the other. Now, see, this is going to be eye open. Yes. Brother Gary. You remember this to Jesus Christ. Amen. This, this is going to be very eye-opening. This is the stuff I was hearing last night while I was trying to speak. Lord, just speak it. Just speak. I, could, I had to get on up earlier than I normally would. Yeah. Couldn't sleep anyway. Amen. Lord, speak it in my ears. Okay, Father, let me get up. Amen. Do y'all have that down? Yeah. There are three realities that will cause you to think one way or the other. The first one is what you hear. Uh -oh. Amen. Come on, brother. What you hear will cause you to think one way or the other. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
The next one is what you see. Uh oh. What you see will cause you to think one way or the other. Yeah. The third thing is what type of events that have taken place in your life somewhere in the past. Well. Some of y'all still controlled by your past. Uh oh. Uh oh. Uh oh. Certain events have taken place in your life. And you allow them to cause you to think a certain way. Uh oh. Oh, this gonna be good. Uh oh. Amen. This gonna be good. Go to Proverbs the 15th chapter with me. Proverbs 15. Oh no, but I'm gonna bring it. I'm gonna make it plain this morning. Proverbs 15. So you gotta watch what you think. Yeah. You can't just let anything come into your ears. That's right. That's right. You can't just let anything come into your ears. Amen. You have to guard your ears for the floor. Amen. People telling you different things that's contrary to the word of God and you believe that? You'll live a defeated life. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, anybody else tired of living a defeated life? Don't you want to live a victorious life? Amen. What's the victorious life? Consistent. Consistent? Overcoming. Amen. Overcoming. Overcoming. What's the victorious life? I got some good answers up here. Three. What's the victorious life? Head, not the tail. You're the head and not the tail. Let me see a person in there that's living a victorious life right now. Let me see your hand. Good Lord. Well, anyway, I know I that question then. You can't tell me what it is if you're not living that way. Okay, I'm moving right along. Touch your situation. I'm going to move right along. All right. Okay, are you in uh, Proverbs 15? No wonder you were the only one hollering about the dress. Uh, let's look at verse 31, 32, and verse 33. And we're talking this morning about what do you think. Mm -hmm. And we're looking at three realities that you must, and I, say, I do say must, you must realize that will cause you to think one way or the other. Here we go. Here we go. The first one we said was what? Here. The first one we said was what? What you hear. What you hear. Come on now, I want participation. Amen. I want you to get what's being said. You must get what's being said. Participate. I know you used to be in a place where people don't talk, but I want you to talk. Yeah. It's communication. Amen, Dr. Malo? We communicate and we, we learn in the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. And you see, you learn the Word so the Word can change your life. Yeah. That's what I come to church for to get my life changed. Amen. Verse 31. The ear that does what? Hear. The reproof of life uh, abided among the dumb. Wise. The ear that heareth the reproof of life abided among the simple. Wise. You become wise when you hear reproof, amen? amen. When somebody speaking some wisdom to you and you hear it, you become wise. Amen. Listen to me. I'm speaking wisdom to you this morning. Listen to this word. Yeah. <laughs> this word will change your life. Amen. Verse 32. He that refuses instruction despises his own what? Soul. But he that hears reproof gathereth what? Understanding. So when you hear the word of God, it makes you wise. Amen. When you hear the word of God, it gives you what? Understanding. Understanding. You see why it's important to watch what goes into your ear? Yeah. What do you need to put in your ear? Yeah. If you're not sitting down reading it, you need to get a tape. Yeah. Put a tape in. If you don't have a tape, you need to get a video. Put a video. Have the word going in your ear all the time. Yeah. It changes your life. Verse 33. The fear of the Lord is the, is the instruction of wisdom and before honor is what? You need to get some instruction. The Word of God is your instruction book. Yes, you need to be instructed according to the Word of God. When you do, when you put that in your ear and you hear that, it changes your life. That's right. You have a tendency to grow up. That's right, man. All right, okay. <laughs> write this point down. This is a point, a very important point I want you to write down. All of them are very important. Yes. Yes. Make a commitment. Boy, I tell you, God can't do nothing with an uncommitted person. Amen. I said, God can't do nothing with an uncommitted person. Amen. Not a thing. Ain't nothing like being a pastor and got people that you can't depend on to do nothing. Amen. I don't have them kind of people, but Amen. I know other Amen. people like that. Amen. They got people that can't. I know this pastor scared to ask his people to go to another church with him. Oh, so they won't go. <laughs> really? <laughs> Brother Flores and Rebellion. Make a commitment 
to yourself that you're going to hear the word of God. Amen. You got to make that commitment. Yes, you do. Y'all, are y'all listening? I know y'all right. Y'all right. That's what it is. Amen. You have to make a commitment to yourself that you're going to hear the word of God. Amen. See, if you don't make a commitment to yourself that you're going to hear the word, you sit in front of the TV seven hours a day. Amen. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's why. <laughs> okay. You sit in front of the TV four hours a day. Okay, let me go a little lower. You sit in front of the TV two hours a day. Okay, let me take it up. You go in front of the TV 10 hours a day. <laughs> Pam holding her head down, Pam. Am I still too low, Pam? <laughs> okay, listen, listen. We gotta get past the TV. We gotta, we gotta, we gotta get what we're putting the word in our ears. Amen. It's important, Saint. Very important that you watch what you hear. Amen. If somebody calls on you, come on. Oh man, you know what? I, I like that church, but the pastor, you too country. Oh. Hang up in their face. Amen. Amen. So I ain't gonna be a part of that backbiting communication. Amen. 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 All right, praise God. Amen. No matter how country I am, just get the point. Amen. Praise <laughs> God. Go over to James, the first chapter with me. James 1. James, the first chapter. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I tell you, I love this word. I could stay in it for hours. I mean, hours upon hours. Anybody that's in here love the word that much? Amen. Well, you stay in there hours upon hours. How many of y'all stay in the word about 10 hours a day? I want to see somebody raise their hands so I can catch the lion demon. <laughs> if you got time to stay in hours to work 10 hours a day, you sure ain't working. You definitely don't have no job. Amen. All right, are y'all in James? I said, are y'all in James? Amen. Wait a minute, this thing. What's going on here, brother? This, this devil trying to hinder this message. He ain't hindering nothing here. In the name of Jesus. Okay, we're going to look at verse 22, 23, and 24. We're talking right now about what you hear. It's important you watch what you hear, what goes in your ears. Here we go. Be not doers of the word. No, brother, I'm not with you. Oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Thank you for speaking up, brother. Thank you. I am in no hurry. I want to make sure you get this word. Okay, brother Flo, you know your Bible scholar, brother. I'm going to wait for anybody else to... Who want to get there? Because I want you to see it. Turn me down just a little bit, brother. We're going to get it together in a minute. Amen. We're not going to let nothing hinder this word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You got it, brother? Thank you for speaking up because I showed it. I want you to miss this. Amen. All right, here we go. Verse 22. But be ye doers of the what? Word. But be ye doers of the what? Word. And not... I'm wondering if y'all looking at your Bible or what? See, that's what I told you. You got to hear it and then do it. You got to hear it and then do it. Why do you keep repeating the same thing over and over? I'll tell you why. I had a couple of people that was going to this church. And boy, they said, man, I, I hadn't heard nobody teach the word. I love that word like that. Oh, man, you can bring that word, brother. But the first time I brought a message on tithing, oh, I don't understand that. Oh, I don't understand that. Everything else was good. <laughs> Everything else was dynamic. When I started thinking on tired, oh, bro, I don't understand that. <laughs> Understanding got bad. <laughs> they were deceiving themselves. Amen. They heard it. They just didn't want to do it. Y'all got quiet. I'm not talking about nobody here, amen. amen. Are you a God robber? <laughs> what the word says. You a God robber if you don't pay your tithe. Another preacher begging for money. No, I ain't. I don't need your money. God takes care of my needs. Amen. I ain't begging for nothing. I don't have to beg. God Amen. takes care of my needs. Let me tell y'all something. All of y'all, this is for somebody. I don't know who it's for. If you're depending on your job to take care of you, you're depending on the wrong thing. Uh-oh. 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 Come on. That's too heavy for y'all, huh? Uh-oh. God is your supplier, not your job. A lot of people had a job yesterday. They ain't got it today. Uh-oh. Depending on that job. Oh, God. Where? Man, your dependency ought to be on God. Amen. Well, let me tell you a little story. Let me tell you a little story. 
Brother Drake. Now, between me and Brother Drake, we got some stories. Now, I'm the oldest, Brother, so I think I got a couple more than you. But that brother got some stories. I was working at a place called Rich Island Body for five years. Worked faithfully, diligently. I was driving the man's tow truck, doing body work in the daytime, driving tow truck at night. When I did, when I, when I did a tow during the night that he didn't know I did, I brought that man his money. Come on, man. Amen. If I made money on the side, I brought that to him. Amen. So I worked for this man like this faithfully for five straight years. And one day, my license was about to expire. Somebody say about. about. They didn't expire. It was about to expire. So I went to get, to some, get my license before they expired. And he thought that I was driving the truck without license. He thought my license had expired. And he came up to me when I got back from lunch that day. And he said, uh, where you been? I said, I went to get my license. This is after five years. And he said, you mean you were driving my truck without license? You mean you had the nerve to get in my truck without license? Let me tell you something. If I ever find out you're doing that again, you out the door. A Christian. A brother. He didn't find out if I, my license was expired. He thought they was expired. And told me I was out the door if I ever drove his truck without license. You know what I said? See, I thought that I had went around telling people at the church, man, I got this job, man, this is a good job. This brother's a Christian brother. Oh, man, this job, this job, this job. <laughs> and the man said to me, you out the door. If I ever think you drive my truck without life. I was so hurt. Here, you can have your job. Clunk, <laughs> clocked out. Amen. And then the Holy Spirit say, don't get into foolishness. He started begging me, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait, don't leave, wait, wait, let me talk to you, let me explain. No, you told me I was out the door, brother. Well, why did all that happen? Because my dependency was on that job. God, you know what God showed me in that whole thing? You depend on me, not a job. That same person you think you're so favorable with, that same person you really relying on them for a job, uh, get rid of you just like that. Get rid of you just like that. I beg your pardon? Might go out and look for somebody to give you a job. Don't know. You got to have your dependency on the Lord. Amen. Are y'all listening to me? Amen. Keep your dependency on God, not on a job. Amen. Now, God uses the job to supply your need, but don't get where you depend on it. Depend on God. Amen. I don't think y'all understand what I'm talking about. Exactly. Some of y'all looking real funny. Exactly. But you know what? I pray that you don't have to go through what I went through to find out what I'm saying. Amen. All right, write down this point. Write down this point. People, write this point down. People have said things to you that have changed the course of your life. People, that's why I'm telling you, you got to guard what you hear. That's right. People have said things to you that have changed the course of your life. Let me tell you the most deadly people there on the face of the earth. Listen to me. Listen. Some of the most deadly people on the face of the earth. Listen, everybody, don't let your mind wonder. Some of the most deadly people on the face of the earth are parents. Amen. You'll never be nothing. You're so stupid. What do you think that child will do when he hear that? Never be nothing. Never be nothing. All he's going to think about is what you say to him all the time. You're such a dummy. You'll never be anything. You're going to spend your whole life in jail. Yeah, and that's just where you end up at, too. So, yeah, this is the ball, baby. <laughs> Amen. But listen to me. We have to watch what we say to our children. Don't call your children dumb, stupid, all of them things. Right. If they being a problem, say, you blessing you on the spank your real part, but call them a blessing. Right. Come on, Don't call them dumb and stupid and all that. Come on. Come on. Do you know that that child got to battle with that the rest of his life? That's right. Yeah. That's right. What he gets at home is what he going to take to the world when he leaves your home. Right. That's right. Come on, man. And that child got to watch what he hear around his own parents. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh-oh. Mm -hmm. That's quiet then. Mm-hmm. 
living a holy life at church and cussing at home. Uh oh, uh oh, uh oh. Hands raised up real high. Crying. Get home and your child wonder where you've been. They don't even know you've been to church. Wonder if you've been to church. That's <laughs> well praising. Let me finish reading this verse here. Look, look, this is this you're deceiving yourself. If you hear the word and not do it, now this message that you hear today, you need to apply it to your life. Amen. If you don't, if you don't apply this to your life, you're deceiving yourself. Look what it says right here. But be ye doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. For if for if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like unto a man beholding his natural face in a glass, for he beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway does what? It. What does he do straightway? It. What manner of man he was. You hear that word? It changes your life. That's you right. got to get it on the inside. You got to start doing it. You got to start living it. Yeah. Somebody say amen. 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 You got to start living according to the word of God. Why from the church? If you're going to come here to work, you're going to live the way you want to live. That's right. That's right. I know that's not very popular, but I'm not trying to be popular. I got to tell the truth. I said I got to tell the truth. Amen. Let's watch what we say to people. Don't let people put negative things in your ear either. Amen. You have to watch out that your ears don't become dead. That's right. You sit right under the word, and the word don't do you no good because you got a hard heart. You got heart trouble. That's right. Oh, y'all ain't got to say that. That's all right. That's all right. right. You got heart trouble. Can't forgive somebody something they did you a long time ago. Yeah. Somebody called you something when you were 15 and you still holding on to it. Oh, yeah. Somebody called you something when you was nine and you still holding on to Amen. it. Amen. Or eight. Amen. Bring it forward. Don't let what people say to you I'm 10 years ago control your life today. Amen. Don't let that happen. That's right. When you come in Christ, you are a new creature. Amen. Once you get born again, the Bible says, old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Amen. So don't let what people said to you a long time ago still hold you in bondage. Amen. Say that. My God. Let me tell y'all something. Let me tell you something. What I've noticed in the church, I've seen this in the church. There are a lot of wounded people in the church. Amen. Do y'all hear me? Yeah. Wounded people in the church. Wounded by something somebody said to them. That's right. Amen. Say that. Amen. Husbands and wives are so good at destroying one another. Amen. Oh, Lord, I'm not. Amen. Didn't nobody bring stones in there? No. No, man. Come on now. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> It's so easy. You gotta watch what's going on. When somebody say something to you negative or something that hurts, uh-uh, I'm buying them words up. I don't receive that in the name of Jesus. There's nothing wrong with saying that. Amen. You better do something with it. You better try to negate it. Because yeah. once you let it go in your ear, it's up to you to guard your gate. That's right. It's up to you to guard what goes into your gate. Amen. Right, God. Right. Write down this next point, please. We're going to move to the area of what you see now. First, we looked at what you hear. Now we're going to look, move into the area of what you see. Amen. All these different things control you. What you hear can control you. What you see can control you. Events that went on in your life in the past can control you. I'm going to show you how to take authority over all of that. I'm going to show you how to do it. Amen. All right, here we go. Don't allow what you see to control you. Don't allow what you see to control you. If it's not the word, don't allow it to control you. Amen. 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 Different things you see in life control the way you think. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Really though. Bring the word. All right. Let's go, let's go to uh, Proverbs 27. Let's go back over to Proverbs. Proverbs 27. Mm -hmm. See, Proverbs is full of wisdom. Amen. Solomon was the wisest Amen. man in the world. Amen. You want to get some wisdom, stay in Proverbs. Get up Amen. every day and read the Proverbs. Amen. What's the date? Today is the 13th. The 13th. Go and read Proverbs 13 today and get blessed real good. Amen. Then tomorrow will be the 14th. Get up and read Proverbs 14. Amen. Bless you real good. Yeah. Hallelujah. Change your life. Yes, if the man was the wisest man in the world, don't you think he could tell you something? Amen. Praise God. Okay, here we go. 
Verse 20. Don't let what you see control you. See, you let things that you see control you, and they'll, you don't have it yet? 27, Proverbs 27. Yeah, Proverbs 27. I so appreciate y'all raising your hand and saying something, because there ain't nothing like being lost by the word of God. You don't know where you are. Thank you for raising your hand. Proverbs 27. Verse 20. Okay, are you there? All right, let's look at verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full. Somebody say hell and destruction are never full. But watch what the next part of the verse says. So the eyes of man are never what? Satisfied. You can't go by what you see. Uh -oh. They're never satisfied. Uh -oh. Do you hear me? Amen. You can't go by what you see because your eyes are never satisfied. <laughs> Always want to see something else. Uh -oh. And then you get to the point where you let what you see control you. I guarantee you'll live a defeated life. Because what come on the news? Bad news. Yeah, yeah. Come on now. People get up early in the morning, turning the news on, putting all that bad stuff right before the eyes. Amen. Look, watch this, watch this. If you'll notice, when a story come out that's real bad and they want you to know about it, you hit five weeks. Yeah. That's right. I mean, it was on this week, then the next week you turn it on, they're still talking about it, then the next week it's still on. Yeah. I mean, people love thriving on bad news. That's right. Bad news. Watch what you see, say. As a Christian, we got to guard what we hear, and we got to guard what we see. Amen. But I want to tell you something. The world you live in wants to control you. Amen. Not, not, they, they don't want the Word to control you. The Word is foolishness to them. The Bible says this is foolishness to the world. But this is what we want to control our lives, amen? amen. Right here. Praise God. Look what it says. Look what it says. I told you I'm going to repeat. I love to repeat. See, some of y'all didn't get it the first time. You were thinking about that chicken and gravy. Here we go. Verse 20. Hell and destruction are never full. So the eyes of a man are never satisfied. So what is he saying there, y'all? What's he saying? Your eyes are never full either. Amen. That's what he's saying. Your eyes are never full either. Amen. All right? Go over to uh, uh, 2 Corinthians. Way back over in the back in the New Testament. 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Uh -oh. I'm giving you enough scripture to go home and look back over them and read them and get them in your spirit. Right. Yeah. See, the next, all of the first time visitors, next time you come, have your Bible, your pencil, your paper with you. Because we believe in teaching. We believe in taking notes. Yeah. We believe in giving you something to leave here with. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Yeah. 2 Corinthians, the 5th chapter and verse 7. Hallelujah. We don't walk by what we see. Amen, Amen Brother Drake? We walk by what we see. We'll be defeated. Because there's always something negative to see. All the time. Amen? Amen. All the time. That's right. Praise God. See, this word will deliver you from all of that. Yeah. Yeah. deliver you. All right. Are y'all there yet? Yeah. If you're there, say amen. Amen. You there, brother? Okay, here we go. Verse 7. For we walk by what? And not by what? Sight. For we walk by what? Faith. And not by what? Sight. For we walk by what? Faith. And not by what? Sight. We don't walk by sight. That's what the Bible says. Don't walk by sight. Two, the three. The very things that you see will give you direction on which way to go because you have a tendency to follow what you see. Amen. You know what I mean? You have a tendency to do that. But God want to bring us to the point where we walk by faith. 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 How do you walk by faith? How do you get the faith to walk by? According to Romans 10 and 17. Go over to Romans 10 and 17. I got these ministers up here. These ministers are quoting that word for These ministers are full of the word of God. Hallelujah. They're full of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God. Okay, if we say we walk by faith and not by sight, then we need to know how to get this faith so we can walk by it instead of by sight. Amen. All right, let's look at verse 17. Is everyone there? Amen. So then, faith cometh by what? Hearing. So how do you get faith? By hearing. How do you get faith? By hearing. 
What do you need to hear to get faith? Look at the next part of that verse. Yeah. And hearing by the what? Word of God. So then how do you get faith? By hearing the word of God. By hearing the word of God. That way you won't walk by what you see. Amen. You won't walk by what you see. It's real simple but powerful, huh, Brother Gary? Amen. Real simple, but at the same time very powerful. You gotta watch what you see. In order for you to be able to take authority on what you see, you need to be built up in your faith. How you gonna get built up in your faith? Get some word on the inside of you. Amen, Paulita? Praise God, hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. Let me tell you something. I'm going to tell y'all something that impacted my life one time that I saw. We had this young man named Freddie. Uh, Freddie, he was Mr. Lanier. The name of our school was uh, Lanier High School in uh, Streetport, Louisiana. And Freddie was Mr. Lanier. He was just the, the most handsome thing you ever seen in his life. He was just a good-looking fella. Man, Freddie had women. He had cars. Freddie had it all. And... Uh, 1968, Freddie went to the service. That was when the Vietnam War was going on. And uh, Freddie, I was over his house one day, uh, two years later. I was at his house with his brother. We, was all, we all grew up together. And Freddie was uh, still in the service, and he came home that day when I was at his house. And he was coming down the road, and he had his little backpack on and things. And I saw Freddie, and look, right at Freddie, didn't recognize him. You know why I didn't recognize Freddie? His face was sunk in. I mean, real bad. His, he was so skinny, just bony. I said, God. And his mama saw him and fainted. She looked at Freddie, and she started running toward him, and she fainted. He looked that bad. And then when everything was all settled down, I had to ask Freddie a question. Freddie, what happened? Freddie, what happened to you? Freddie said, man, that Vietnam was, war was so rough that I had to stay on drugs just to survive. He said, I saw people bottom parts get blown off. I saw people's side of the face get blown off. Now, Freddie was a nice grown-up fella in a mother and a dad's home, a real good home, and went and saw all that killing and blowing, and he had a couple of wounds on himself, you know, from war and stuff. And let me tell you something. When I saw Freddie, I said to myself, I'll never go to Vietnam. Amen. That changed me. What I saw changed me. I, said, I would never go to Vietnam. Amen. When I went to the service in 1969, and they tried to send me to Vietnam, I ain't going. Amen. Amen. What you Amen. see will change what you feel. Amen. I mean, I wanted to go to the service before, but when I saw Freddie, mm -mm. Freddie wasn't Mr. Lanier no more. Freddie looked like a dead man. He was laughing, but he looked like he had, you know, he looked really bad. What you see can change you. Amen. I said, I'm not going to Vietnam. No, I already look this bad. If I go to Vietnam, I ain't going to tell him what I look like. I ain't going. <laughs> no, I don't need no help with my look. All right, here we go. Here we go. Oh, Fred, I feel so sorry for him. Okay, all right. Let's go over to Luke, the 10th chapter. Uh -oh. i got to move fast because time is moving. i got to move fast. Uh, see, but we all working on getting our own building. Amen. And we want to do all this rushing anymore. Amen. I got too many. Anyway. Amen. i got too many steaks to bring. Amen. Hallelujah. The last thing we said that we need to look at the reality, what was the last thing that we needed to realize? The first one was what? What we yeah. The second one was what we see. And the third one was what? The events that happened in your life in the past will cause you to think a certain way. We need to take authority over these things that are trying to control our lives in the way we think. Amen? Amen. All right. Are you in Luke? Luke 10. We're going to look at verse 1 two, and three. Is everybody there? Amen. Okay, here we go. After these things, the Lord appointed other seventy also. In other words, he had, in verse, in chapter nine, he had appointed his twelve disciples to go out and heal the sick and lay hands and all these different things. And then here in chapter ten, verse one, he appointed seventy other disciples of his. 
and sent them two and two before his face into every city and place, whether he himself would come. Therefore said he unto them, The harvest truly is great, but the laborers are what? Yeah. Pray ye therefore that the Lord of the harvest, that he would send forth laborers into the harvest. Go ye, somebody say, go your ways. Go your ways. Who was he telling to go their ways? That's right, he was telling them to go their way. Behold, I send you forth as lambs among wolves. Now, let me, let me lay the foundation here. Amen. They had been with Jesus all this time. And they saw him do sign after sign, wonder after wonder, work after work, thing after thing. They saw Jesus do all these things. Now, he sent them out to go and do the same thing he had been doing. Now, he told them, you've seen me do it, and I'm walking in the fullness of the Holy Spirit, but I'm going to send you out as lambs among wolves. Does a lamb stand a chance against a wolf? No. No way. No. But in the power of the Holy Ghost, right. as a Christian, uh -oh. a lamb eat a wolf up. Uh -oh. yeah. Come on now. Yeah. Come on now. Now, let's watch and see how the event that took place in their lives changed their lives. Amen. Look at verse 17 in the same chapter. I told you, brother, for to change your life. Amen. You're not going to be the same when you leave it. Amen. Verse 17. And the seven did, did what? Return. What did they do? Return. Again with what? Joy. Saying, Lord, they're excited now, y'all. They pumped up. Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through your name. Amen. Oh, the devils are running from us. We're going to see They're running the other way. Amen. Now, Previous to this chapter right here, you would not find that in the Bible where they came back excited because an event had took place in their lives. That's right. They saw Jesus do it, but they never done it before. Now, after they went out in the name of Jesus and did these great and mighty works, it changed their lives. That's right. They came back all joyous, excited, puffed up. Oh, Lord, they were running from us. Every time they went out, they came back with a good report. Amen. Look what the next verse says. I'm going to show you something that will bless you. This is going to change your life. Verse 18. And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. And, I, and he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Behold, I give unto you power to trade upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Who did he give that power to? He gave it to them disciples. Listen, listen. They went out. They came back excited. All excited because demons were trembling, trembling when they came around. And then the next verse said, And Jesus said to them, And I beheld Satan fall from heaven like lightning. Anybody ever wonder, what does that got to do with the seven that going out? What's this got to do with, behold, I give unto you power to trade up on serpents and scorpions? Y'all ever wonder that? Mm -hmm. Brother Floyd said he knows. Why, why, Brother Floyd? Because the power of God. See, they came back to even the demons fear uh, trouble when, you know, when we speak in your name. And uh, God defeated Satan and before the earth was even... You know, before let, you even created the earth. Let me get you on tape. Say that again. God defeated the devil even before he created the earth. The devil had already been defeated. You know, and Jesus was, was Jesus is God. So he saw this happen anyway. He was just trying to tell them, you know, that, you know, he was just confirming what the word, the, the faith. That's a good answer, Brother Floyd. Is that, do you agree with that? He's not just really understood. Doctor, he got something different. You got something different from him? Um, well, the Word of God is truth. And if we have the truth within us, um, the father of lies will be scattered and destroyed. Because the Satan is the father of lies. Mm -hmm. If we have the truth within us, Jesus, who is the truth, then, then all lies will be destroyed and scattered. Okay, now explain to me how does that tie verse... 17 and verse 18 you got. Read verse 17 and 18. And the 70 returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. 
And he said unto them, I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. How do you tie the two together? Well, it's, it's Jesus. It's Jesus Himself that's within us by His name, His truth. Okay. Too late. You had the chance. It's too late. Too late. It's, it's eleven oh five. I gotta go ahead and wrap it up. All right. An event. Listen, listen. I'm gonna give you this so you can hold on to it the rest of your life. Listen. He said unto them. I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Now notice, in verse 17, Revelation knowledge, in verse 17, And the seventy returned again with joy, saying, Lord, even the devils are subject unto us through thy name. Had they ever casted out devils before Jesus came in their life? No. Did they even know what a devil was before Jesus came in their life? If you go and mark this down on your, on your notes if you want to, Go look at Mark, the first chapter, beginning at verse 20, at verse 20, and read the next 10 verses, and you'll see it was a man with an unclean spirit sitting up in the church. Yeah. Nobody said a word to him. They didn't even recognize a demon-possessed person. So Jesus come in and start preaching. The first thing the devil jumped up and said, what do we have to do with you? Get out of here. We don't want to hear the truth. Uh -oh. Amen. And then Jesus casted the devil out of us. Amen. So people begin to see Jesus cast demons out of folks. Then he sent these out, and they started casting devils out, and they came back shouting and hollering, Ooh, even the devil is something to us through your name. And then Jesus said, And I beheld Satan as lightning fall from heaven. Why? Because pride will enter in when God starts using you, when you start casting out devils, laying on the sea, and you're seeing things coming, pride will come in. What caused Satan to fall from heaven? Come on, y'all, what caused it? Y'all know, know the story, right? What did Satan say? I will be like the Most High God. I will lift my throne above the throne of God. What is that? Pride. It's pride. And Jesus was trying to warn them, this event changed your life. But at the same time, don't get all lifted up in pride. Don't get all lifted up in pride. Yeah, I'll use you. Yeah, I'll give you the authority to go out, but don't get lifted up in pride. Yeah. Then when he told them, don't get lifted up in pride, then he says in verse 19, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. Amen. But don't get lifted up in pride. Uh, verse 19 won't work for you. That's right. There you go. Amen. Stay right. with the word. Stay with the word. Amen. Write this down. Jesus knew, Jesus knew that this event would change their lives. He knew that it would. He knew that it would change their lives. I need you to write this down. And he gave them sound advice. Don't get caught up in pride. Don't get caught up in pride. Now, for sake of time, I won't be able to repeat that because I gotta go ahead and close. But let me let, let me leave this with you before before I go ahead and close. There are events that have taken place in some of you all's lives that have absolutely astounded you. That have absolutely astounded you. Um, I remember when I was 14, had just turned 15. You know, what, you know what I noticed about Jesus? Whenever Jesus preached, he always had stories to go along with his preaching. Amen. We, we call them parables, but they're stories. Amen. And they really bring a point. So I'm going to share this story to help bring this point about events changing your life. It, and it could have happened a long time ago, but it still got you in bondage. I remember when I was uh, 14, just turning 15, never had a girlfriend. At that age, I didn't even know what a girlfriend was. I didn't even know it. You know how you, boys at that certain age, they're talking about they don't like girls. Just me, okay, anyway. I was just talking about, you know, I don't like no girl, right? And so this girl came from the country. She was just the finest thing you ever laid eyes on. She, to me, she, she was 14, but she looked like she thought about how she wanted to look and made herself like that. You know she was tough. And, uh, man, I was in love with that girl head over heels. When it came to lunchtime, 
for school since we was girlfriend and boyfriend. I didn't even eat. I saved my little quarter so I could buy her some cookies at the end of the day. I saved my little quarter. Pretending like I had money, but I had stars already all day. Didn't have no money. I was hungry. And when I bought the cookies, and she asked me, did I want one? I go, oh, no, I'm not. Starving, man. Hoping she dropped one. <laughs> I'm telling you, things that happen in your life can change you. So here I am in love, spending my lunch money every day. My mama said, boy, you so get money thin now. <laughs> I didn't want to tell my mama I was being a fool and spending my money on this girl for some cookies. But anyway, the girl jumped up and moved back to the country. Oh, man, I was walking around crying. Oh, God. I mean, I was crying. I couldn't see the girl no more. Fifteen years old, all I had was a bicycle. And I was so in love. Till some of her people that stayed in the neighborhood, I said, where'd they move? Tell me where they moved to. Man, them people moved 20 miles away up in the country. You know what I did? Got on my bicycle. <laughs> And I rode 20 miles to see this girl. This was a week later. Now, let me tell y'all something. This event, you're going to remember this story. Changed my life. A week, one week. Somebody say one week. One week. Only one week has gone by. I get on my bicycle. I ride on this bicycle 20 miles. By the time I'm getting ready to come home, it's dark. And they had a, a little curve they called Dead Man Curve. And a lot of people died in that curve. I'd be looking on my bike, just looking around, thinking I'm going to see somebody dead or something. So anyway, I get down there one night, one day, one Saturday, and I noticed she kept looking out the window. I said, what you looking for? She said, oh, nothing. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. You don't got to look out the window three times within the last five minutes. What are you looking for? She said, oh, nothing. Man, after a while, <laughs> I hear a car pull up. Here comes this big old tall guy. Stand up, big man. Stand up. Stand up. He was a little taller than this brother right here. Really? I was looking up at this big guy. He was just as big as him. Thank you, brother. You can sit down. Big old man. And uh, he walks to the door. And she looked at him. And she looked at me. And I'm about this tall, right? About this big. And this big guy looked at me. And said, what you doing here? Nothing. <laughs> I'm going to go. <laughs> And so he was heading toward me, and she jumped up. Don't you hit him. You leave him alone. God, I was so embarrassed. The girl got to pick up for me. I was scared. I was shaking. I had my brother with me. And man, as soon as she got between me and him, and I got some Adelaide, pew, I jumped on that bike, and I was gone. Left my brother and everything. I said to myself, I thought we was in love. I thought I, that was, this was the girl I was going to marry. Ah. <laughs> That's what I said. I was in love. So here I am. I'm riding home, you know, and I finally had to realize I left my brother. And I slowed down so my brother could catch up, but I didn't say nothing all the way home. We just ride. I didn't say nothing. So I get home, I go and flop down on the bed. <laughs> my mother said, what's wrong with you? Nothing. Leave me alone. God. Man, I couldn't make it. My grades went down to school. All of a sudden, I hated women. Whereas I didn't have a girlfriend before, didn't like girls. Now I fell in love, and this girl will have me come way up there, this big old giant, been to jump on me, and I'm so scared, I'm about to, man, I tell you, I've never been so scared in my life. And so uh, it took me a week to get over that girl, man, a whole week. Well, I could stop thinking about it, you know what I mean? You know how you think about somebody all day, all day long. Anybody ever been in love when you think about somebody all day? Just two or three people. Well, hey, man. So what happened was, I started hating girls. And uh, what I did was, I said to myself, I'm going to lift weights, and I'm going to get big, and every bully I see, I'm going to get him. I'm serious. This, this event changed my life. Instead of being asleep at 3 o'clock in the morning, I was pushing weights. Just pushing, thinking about it. I'm going to go back and get him. Really? I'm serious. God is my witness. I wouldn't stand up here and lie in church. I was in the, all that time I was pushing that iron, thinking about him and how big of a fool I looked like in the front of her. And man, from that point on, let me tell y'all something. I just got delivered 
10 years ago from running in the bullets. If I saw a great big old person pushing somebody around, look like a little button went off in my mind. Attack. <laughs> Get him. I didn't care about how big he was. That event that took place in my life scarred me for the rest of my life. Till I got saved. That's right. Even after I got saved, I still had problems in that area. Events can change your life. Amen. Important question now. What has changed your life like that? What has changed your life like that? What have you heard? What have you seen? What event has taken place in your life that has absolutely astounded you? Bow your head with me. You're not over it yet. While your head is bowed, I want you to think about what we've just said. I want you to think about it. I want you to think about what, was it, what has impacted you in a way that you're not over it. You're still dealing with it. You're still hurt. You're still scarred. You're still torn. I didn't have time to show you in the scripture today how to deal with this, but the Lord laid it on my heart to pray for those who are still in bondage to something somebody said, something you saw somebody do, or an event that took place in your life way back. And you're still in bondage. You're still hurt. You're still scarred. You're still bruised. Because you can't let this thing go. You're still hurt. You're still scarred. You're still bruised. Because you can't let this thing go. You need prayer. You need prayer. You need prayer. I want to pray for you today. You need prayer. You're still hurt. Every time you see a certain thing on TV, it triggers that anger on the inside of you. Every time somebody say the wrong thing, it triggers that anger on the inside of you. Every time you see a, something of that sort happen to somebody else in their life, it triggers that anger on the inside of you. You need prayer. I want to pray for you right now. While every head is bowed and every eye is closed, you raise your hand if you need prayer. And hold your hand up while I pray. One, two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen hands. Hold your hand up while I pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Lord, I just come before you in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, I just ask in the name of Jesus that every bondage, every oppression, every depression, every suppression. Oh, Father God, I ask in the name of Jesus that you would break it right now by the authority of the name of Jesus. I know that there's authority in that name, Lord God, and I speak it out of my mouth right now. And I break the power that's bondage over these people's lives. These are your people, Lord God, and I say in the name of Jesus, they'll no longer be held in that. Give them the strength in that inner man to forgive and let it go, Lord God, in Jesus' name. Give them the strength this very hour, Lord God, while I'm praying, Lord God. I know you didn't ask me to pray for nothing, Lord God. I believe that they'll be released from the bondage of it in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, I lose the spirit of peace over them right now. I lose the spirit of peace over them right now. I say that their minds are free to meditate on the word of God. I say that their minds are free to hear from you again, Lord God. I say that their minds are free, Lord God, to learn of you, Lord God, in a supernatural way. I thank you that that peace will overcome them. It will surpass their own understanding in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you that you'll begin to use them now, Lord God, like you never have before. In the mighty and glorious name of Jesus. Now, if you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can put your hand down. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, and you say, I want this Jesus. I want this Jesus. I see y'all excited about him, and I want him in my life. If you want to receive Jesus Christ, the Bible says, God so loved the word that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever, that could mean anybody in here, whosoever should believe in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. If you need that everlasting life, raise your hand right now and say, I want Jesus. I want that everlasting life. One hand, two hands, three hands, four hands. Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Listen what the Bible says. Listen, it's time, it's time out for playing. We're not playing church no more. It's time out for playing. Listen to me. The Bible says Jesus is coming back out to his church. And it would be a sin if I sit here and don't tell you the truth. And he came back this day and you get caught left here. 
It's the Bible says he coming back after his church. If you want to be in this number with these people that have raised their hand, it's time now to raise your hand and allow Jesus Christ to come in your heart and take over. That means you're going to give him lordship. You're going to let him control your life according to his word. You're no longer going to live your life the way you want to live it. If you want to receive Jesus, your Lord and Savior, raise your hand. Say, that's me. I want to receive Jesus. I want him to be my Lord and Savior. One, two, three, four, five. Praise God. Now, everybody pray this out loud with me, please. Say, Father, Father in, the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, I thank you, I thank you for, your word. for your word. Your word says, your word says whosoever, whosoever shall call upon your name, upon your name shall, be saved. shall be saved. I'm calling. I'm, calling. I'm, that I'm that whosoever. Thank you for hearing my prayer. Thank you for hearing my in, prayer. The in the name of Jesus. Help me, Father, Help me, Father to cast the old things away that I may walk in the new. Thank you for coming into my heart. Right now, in the name of Jesus. Thank you for forgiving me for my sin. In the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise. Hallelujah.